All right, there we go. Recording started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Two Guys Talking. I'm happy. Bueno, bueno, bueno. We're going back to the old style. Yes, like Blender. Kind of like our own weekend update. This just in. <laughs> the new Superman picture. Been people been talking about it, making uh, parody versions of it. I know we had one. Dude, with uh, my favorite drunken, one is that drunk Superman. Drunken Superman. Drunk yeah. Superman for sure. So I'm not hopeful. I mean, I'm not disappointed, but I'm all like, so when they said that they were going with, with the old underwear and like, like the new ass, I'm like, all right, I could deal with that. Like, but he said, oh, we're going to go with the underwear on the outside. But yes, that is my feeling about the new picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is rock for the brave. <laughs> I mean, it fits so perfectly because he's just <laughs> so calmly putting his shoes on while Something is happening in the background, possibly Brainiac. So it turned no, it's actually might be Sunspot, and um, because he's going with the Grant Grant Morrison, I or Solar Spot. Grant yeah, I, thought Morrison Sun, I thought Sunspot was an X Men, the uh, the one X Men guy. Yeah, you're right. It's in uh, uh, yeah, you're right. It's a guy that Jubilee's dating, right? Mm hmm. Guns. But there's there's a similar oh. named guy in DC, which is probably what you're referring to. Yeah, because what um right here on a uh, comic book doc. Because yeah, that's the picture, the depressing picture. Like the S, cool, but you could tell he has the red underwear on, but he has baggy clothing, so he's gonna have the tights on over this baggy jumpsuit. Mm -hmm. I'm really afraid of what it's gonna look like on. In live action, but let me see if it says new suit. Uh, finally, this SMO. What'd you say? He looked like a janitor or something. Yeah, he looks like a janitor. Like on Krypton, he like Jor El wasn't in charge of the science center. He cleaned the science center. The house of L was a bunch of like janitors. <laughs> <laughs> Kryptonian janitor. Yeah, but yeah, so that is supposed to be a villain, but Grant Morrison uh, created. Okay. Let me see if I could. I thought it was Brainiac. I don't know why. I guess because like oh, the, so it... the purple, pink, pink. Yeah. Kind of like his color. Yeah, because it... all right. So it's a a villain called Solaris, created by Grant Morrison. Ah, okay. So you have any images I... of Solaris. Maybe. Yeah, I'm about to share it right now. I don't understand why he's. Right there. So you can okay. see there's a picture of it in the background in the Solaris. So I'm That's guessing cool that was kind of like enemy. And it's also like a world threat. So it's kind of cool. It's not just like Lex Luthor trying to like, you know, create a bizarro say. So yeah. it's like. So, yeah, and this puts as confusing and as oddly the casual image of Superman has been for some fans. Whatever the heck is going on in the background, it also seems that he shows Solaris, the tyrant son, a cosmic villain that plays a role in the comic All-Star Superman, which James Gunn, ha which James Gunn has repeatedly touted as a big influence on a Superman movie. So mm -hmm. All-Star Superman is the one where he gets too close to the sun. And he pretty much gets like cancer and is dying he gets too much power and dies so i'm wondering if he's going for a uh, death of superman again oh wow but right two, away so, <laughs> yeah we'll have two death of supermans and whatever is going on in that tv show with doomsday well technically we're yeah we're gonna have three yeah because like you said the doomsday and the the show with tyler um superman and lois potentially he's yeah. gonna die in that so we'll have two deaths of supermans at the same exact time or well around the same yeah. time huh so it and it was 1998 the villain first appeared in super in dc universe one million 
So it would yeah. take one million years in the future, is how what he wrote about. Oh wow! So yeah, the Metropolis will be super futuristic with like flying cars. Maybe you're going around and. Hmm. I oh, hope we'd have a. a I hope we'd have flying cars by a thousand years from now. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. <laughs> I mean, damn. It's just like. The year three thousand. So, we're I, still not even there. <laughs> I know shit. What's up? So, I don't think it was so much of him. Um him uh looking for us to look at the costume i think it was more of us to see like what villain he's going because people kept saying like what villain is it going to be he hasn't released it so because they he named all the actors and he was like which actor could be a villain in it but it turns out it looks like it's not going to be a one actor being a villain it's going to be a, a digital like monster up in the sky destroying metropolis yeah because he's going like- to have nicholas holt will yeah. be lex luther so there will be a humanist villain but maybe lex luther will not even be bad in this movie i'm wondering if he tries it because the whole point of all-star superman is that he lex luther tricks him to go in like like a couple a hundred like a mile within the sun and he gets overcharged and it supercharges him and he's gonna die okay and so luther knows that so luther tries to become the savior of metropolis like so superman's mm-hmm. going and yeah but then he turns into the villain again gets superpowers and all that stuff and so i don't remember solaris in it i gotta reread it i should there's even a movie on hbo max that we or not well i guess just max but Mm -hmm. they have all-star superman on there so there is an animated film with, with solaris in it i'm guessing if they did All Star Superman, I never watched that one. Okay, yeah, we'll have to check it out. But yeah, I'm not. This didn't really excite me because I don't know much about Solaris or anything like that. What I really want to see is the the other people in Superman because we're gonna have this big, wide DC universe. Why can't we? I want to see their costumes. I want to see their. Like, I want to see Hawk Girl. I want to see Guy Gardner. I want to see. Like Mr. Terrific and all that stuff, mm-hmm. Justice League International. I'm sure but, those those will come out of soon. He'll release them one by one, so they all get their little time to shine. Yeah, because I want to see Millie Alcock in the uh, Supergirl costume too. I don't. He never. He he said I've never confirmed to say that she'll be in this movie, so I'm afraid that. Mm. I won't show her mm. like we because we were talking about off camera what was that plot line i said that in text messages i was saying how i want an like off world outer space threat like off world i want him to yeah. go to like a world war, war world or something like that or something that brainiac's trying to take over and then it turns out that brainiac he's trying to capture kal-el and it turns out he's all like oh, i have a female kryptonian uh, now i need a male and it turns out that it's her he captured her in her spaceship and that's how we kind of get her to come into this universe. Yeah, like I would instead like of that. her just crashing. Yeah, then it's just like I would, something off world, which I'm hoping with Solaris attacking, it is an off world like adventure, but because I'm sick of Kansas. They keep throwing Kansas and like and in Smallville. Our face. Like, Shut up. Smallville is good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, 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 the show is good, but yeah, no, you're right. It's like we get his roots, like they did spider-man uh homecoming perfect spider-man in civil war perfect like we know who he is like just bring him in i'm mm-hmm. hoping they do that in this but it sounds more like they're gonna do like a midlife crisis superman like oh i'm dealing with both the two worlds like it's i'm sick of superman having emotions i want this upbeat guy who's like the the perfect role model for kids yeah going around spouting like you know positive things and you you guys look both ways before you cross the street like saying stupid stuff like that i want that superman yeah like that one scene in superman and lois that we both like where he's uh superman's out doing his thing and the kid's like wow i really like your costume he's like thank you my mom made it you know and he's all yes super yes. happy and like that's what i'm that, talking that, about more of the heartwarming superman and stuff People, a lot of people always say Christopher Reeves was like the best Superman, and Tyler got pretty close. Like no one's ever going to recreate what he did, but 
Tyler was pretty pretty damn good when he was Superman. Yeah. So was Brandon Routh, but like I just didn't like the Superman Returns movie that much. But Henry Cavill was pretty good, but I just don't feel like Zack Snyder used him properly. Yeah, and I haven't read the report. Apparently, he's talking about how what the end game for uh, Henry Cavill was. Mm-hmm. But I I gotta read that because I'm like, what what was the end game for that? It's just like. It made him a buffoon, kind of like fighting. Like he still didn't master his powers. Like you know, mm-hmm. like he fought this big old threat and he barely had powers. Like he didn't understand him too much. So it's just, yeah. It would have been nice if he kind of practiced, had that power, and then Zod popped up. Yeah. But, but you know, Zach Zach wanted lots of battles and destruction, destroying Smallville, destroying Metropolis. <laughs> he really hates he's really the enemy of the contractor he hates like fucking yeah him and Ted mosby would be enemies <laughs> <laughs> oh shit superman's in town here we go <laughs> no not my building <laughs> but really he's given more them more work because then the more things you need to rebuild yeah really the more contractors you need to stimulate yep. the economy <laughs> this is a uh, clerk's conversation now that we're having yep. Actually, they would <laughs> hire contractors to think that the Empire would use their own guys is actually... <laughs> As a contractor myself, I miss when Clerks was good. I miss when Kevin Smith was, you know, making entertainment. Can you imagine his Star Wars? Man, not like... I wouldn't want to see him do one today because he's kind of, you know, not as... I don't think he's what? as talented as he used to be, straight up. Yeah. But like back in like the 90s or like... When he was like really like one of my favorite things i, I think that would have been incredible i gotta read his daredevil people say his daredevil's good i read his um green arrow run and, yeah, um, and i think he did direct a supergirl episode or a flash episode or so something he did like a bunch of season. flashes and supergirls and he's actually mm-hmm. friends with supergirl the actress and her husband yeah that's like, right that's went... why she was in uh clerks three right or one yes. of those oh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah she played um blunt man the female version they that's they, right yeah he i keep forgetting he wrote that i read there was a superman homepage, like it was everything superman and they had like old scripts and stuff that deleted scripts and they had kevin smith's script up there and it, it was kind of interesting like the yeah. tim burton movie that, that he wrote yeah yeah because yeah kevin smith was the one that wrote wrote that right like yeah it would have been and him and tim burton what a combination what a strange combo because Kevin Smith as a writer, I think, is good. As a director... Uh, Hit or miss. As both, I don't like anymore. Like, Clerk's yeah. good, uh, you know? Up until the third one. I, that's yeah. the one I, I just can't can't agree with. It's too dark and depressing. Like, Cop Out sucked, but... I like Zack and Mary. I, like, I know you didn't like that movie, but I liked it. Yeah, no, that wasn't my cup of tea. Yeah. I... I I could see why it's funny. It's just like I wanted, you know, I, I guess I'm selfish in my Kevin Smith. I wanted Kevin Smith, not good the, after that was Kevin yeah, Smith. yeah, and that's the thing too. When I think about Zach and Mary, like a lot of the jokes in that movie are ad lib by like the actors. So it's not even Kevin Smith's writing. He just had the the ability to put these people in a room because like a lot of the funny stuff that's said in that movie is like Justin Long, like when he's the gay porn star, just like ad libbing and saying whatever the hell comes to his mind while him and Seth Rogen because that like you said that's basically what he wanted was a Judd Apatow movie like 40 year old virgin or something but you know Kevin Smith dies and yeah <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> no just the Kevin Smith <laughs> like Kevin it was Smith the death died. of Kevin Smith was back in Mary <laughs> you think that was uh, more than one meeting <sighs> I mean cop out was sad but I mean, it just box office wise, I think it was cult wise. People still like it. Like you do like it. And I know many people who like it. Like I said, it's just not my cup of tea. It's not my type of like, I like Jed Apatow movies. I think I super bad is my favorite, but it, it's just, he writes very much like Kevin Smith in his own little humor. Like, you know, it's a lot of people talking, a lot yeah. of scenario, people talking about scenarios and what if some hyperbole, like, you know, so I could see why people who, like kevin smith like that but it's just like 
super bad i think it was more like i wanted an adventure like that like this is 40 and then funny people i can't sit through mm -hmm. did you like funny yeah, I, did, people? I, did, I didn't like funny people no that 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 was when i really started to be over judd apatow and i'm like oh this and and like adam sandler and it was like i was like excited for that movie because it's adam sandler and Seth yeah. Rogen. and at the time i was really into those actors and like their work and yeah, i really didn't like that movie that's another movie that was like really depressing like and just like i know dark comedy can work sometimes but for me that movie just didn't didn't work so you say zach mary but i think the the movie for me that that i started to really not like kevin smith anymore yoga hosers was terrible but i i think the jay and silent I, I bob reboot i think the jay and silent I bob reboot was kind of the beginning of the end because that movie sucked too the, the reboot he he tried to get too dramatic and wanting to make the audience cry and shit like that's dude, not that's not what i was you so excited in. for that movie dude like yeah. i was like yes let's do it let's do and it and then jay's but... like a shitty dad and he's like estranged from uh boo boo kitty like, fuck and like <laughs> totally opposite of jay in real life like jay like i is attached to his daughter at the hip but like but yeah it was this, it, like yeah, he wanted to ruin Jay's character. It's like he's already a skeevy stoner. Like you don't need to make make people hate him more or something. You know what I mean? Like that just didn't yeah. seem unnecessary. So you know what his plan for that is? He's what? waiting for um the next movie. He like they're writing a sitcom together. So Kevin Smith wrote a, is doing a sitcom, and um he's waiting for his daughter to turn eighteen, and that's gonna be Jay's daughter or Millennium Falcon's daughter. So Jay's gonna be a grandpa oh my god so he's waiting for it and then like jay's wife was all like what if she doesn't want to act and he, he's all like well she's gonna have to in this one <laughs> like <laughs> if you want a new house you're gonna have to make your daughter act and shit but yeah so that's how he wants to do the story he wants to do it of jay being a grandpa oh no yeah so yeah um, it's like that's cute family wise like you know but it, like it worked in um trailer park boys with ricky but because he's a yeah, funny stoner and he's a grandpa and yeah. I, I, it's already been done that's the thing like kevin smith other other stoner comedies have already done done it so it's like too late now i don't know for it to be original dude I, honestly plus, I'm, plus I just everyone want hates his he-man shit i haven't watched any of dude, his he-man shit i don't like he-man so that's i do he could do what he wants to he-man i don't care like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Like people are complaining and stuff. I was like, well, his it's his interpretation. Let him do what he wants. I'm not a fan of it, so I don't care. But it's like, like him doing the arrow stuff and Stuart, like a lot of a few of his episodes are good. Like he did a few of the Flash, or I think he did two Flash and he did a lot more Supergirl. Yeah. And like, and like people asked him like, so were you pissed that they didn't ask you to come back for the last episode of Supergirl? He's like, no, I kind of wanted to watch it as a fan, which I kind of mm -hmm. understand. Like he enjoyed the storylines and all that, so. But yeah, it's just him. I I like him as a podcaster more than a, as a creator. <laughs> Stay away right. from my comic books. Stay away from Marvel and <laughs> Star Wars. But yeah. So you, since we were talking about Superman, I think a perfect segue from Superman is into X Men because there was that article about Storm and her flight being compared to. Man of Steel, which I even said during the watch party, like live when I, when yeah, I react. Yeah, if you guys go back, yeah, you'll definitely hear him say like, "Oh my God, that's like Superman." And I was like, <laughs> I saw the article and uh, what what's his name? How do you pronounce it? Uh, it's like Boyd Bedemoy. I think it, it, it sounds kind of like Cajun or something like from like New Orleans, because you know, like Remy LeBeau. It, it kind of reminds yeah. me of that, but maybe I'm wrong. But. Yeah, Bo DeMau, the, the creator of X-Men 97, the showrunner or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, uh, he had, like, posted that it was, in fact, true that Storm's first, like, well, not first flight, but her first flight again after she regains her abilities. And she's flying around all happy, and the shots are exactly like Man of Steel. So it just shows that De, uh, Bo DeMau, yeah, that name is hard to say, my God. Uh, but yeah, he that guy. We'll, we'll call he, him Bo. Bo, like yeah, Bo Burnham. Bo. We'll call him yeah. Bo DeMeo. 
Bo DeMeo, I think. So he's we'll call not only Bo. is he a fan of X Men because the other stuff with uh, Wolverine that we'll talk about, but like just the fact that he, you know, he liked Man of Steel, which is DC, but you could tell that this guy's a fan of like all superhero stuff. Like he's not boxed in. Like, oh, I work for Marvel, no. so I only watch Marvel stuff. So like, no. And the homework he's telling us to do means that he read these comic books. So I want, like, I know Disney's probably not listening to this, but. I say we have to get on Disney to fucking get fans of these things. I mean, people who put their heart and soul into it. I mean, there was so much shit being talked about this show, like before it even aired. That they're, oh, it's going to get canceled. We're afraid. We're afraid. And then it, that first episode just opened up a, a floodgate of amazingness for us. So I think it's, it's, this is, this X Men 97 is proof to Disney that you need to have fans of the art i mean it, it's obvious he loves it i mean he he's even putting in aspects of other like like you i like the superman fight scene make storm do that like it, mm -hmm. it's awesome that's absolutely amazing and so it's like for i know he left and it's not the creator stuff is why he left it was something else but i you got to bring him back like get rid of the person that complained and just bring him back because he, he he made you guys gold. Like, this is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like, X-Men 97, the season is amazing. Like, right now, with the nine episodes, on an average, I think it's it's like a 10 out of 10. Or a nine, or a high 9 out of 10. Nothing like lower even, than that for me. I even tweeted it like a response because he gave one more homework to read another storyline before next week's episode. And I yeah. put, will do it. And I was like, thank you so much, dude, for making it, like people our age are loving it and and then um i put put i love the morph i think i put i love the morph member berries 10 out of 10 keep it coming don't want it to end and it's just like it's true because it's like I don't, I, I don't want the season to end but you know i i can't wait to see this final episode because dude if like the filler episodes are cool like can you imagine this last, last like big final battle and I'm hoping it's like 45 minutes. I don't want it to be like 20 minutes long. And like, I want it to be really, like an hour finale. The, there hasn't really been much filler episodes because even the ones that are filler were actually character yeah. development. So like the pretty Storm smart one, that was a filler. But it was it, like you said, it was character development. She became stronger than what she was before. Like she got her powers taken away, but we got an even more powerful Storm. So it was yep. it was kind of cool. And then then we learned about Forge too. So. Yeah, Forge and like even the Jubilee stuff with Sunspot, like even like the Mojo Vision, which seemed just like a silly filler episode. That was actually character development for Jubilee and like seeing her what her potential could could bring. And exactly, really good stuff. Like they showed us how powerful this because we're all like, oh, she does fireworks, she does little concussion blasts. No, she, if she gets control of that, she's gonna be badass. Like she's gonna be one powerful chick. So I I love that episode and it was emotional development too and it sucks because they built up this emotion to her and sunspot that's his name right Sunspot. yeah yeah so I forget but what then his, in, his like regular name is because that they call him yeah i forget too but he like the build up to that we were like oh she has a boyfriend she has a happy ending and then for him he has his own thing going on and for him to deal with that emotions and kind of put her aside like listen like my my parents turned me down he's right like humans suck like you know it's mm -hmm. us or nothing and then she's all like come on it'll say for me it's just that emotional build up it's like they wrote emotion they wrote action they wrote adventure and they wrote member bearers for us it's like it's just a perfect mixture and i think i even put chef's kiss and like <laughs> oh yeah but it's it's just amazing i mean I I've given two 10 out of 10 ratings on the season so far, and we haven't even got to like the actual finale episode, which usually would be the one that they save for like 10 out of the 10 out of 10 territory. But nah, like there's been so many outstanding moments throughout this first season, like the death of Gambit, the supposed death of Magneto, um, what just happened last week with Wolverine. We'll, we'll type spoilers in the heading too. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, because I, I just realized because I was about to say like. Yeah, I'll put that on. That I was screen. like, even the death of Jean Grey, possibly because yeah, we don't see. I, I, I don't think they'll kill off both of them, the Goblin Queen and Jean. 
Yeah, no way. Uh, they better or unless, dude, it's see this. That's what I don't know where it's going. Like I know it's in a comic, but he's changing it up perfectly enough, and like adding his own story to it. Uh, it's like I'm excited to think because it's not one possibility. It could be it's multiple like fucking scenarios going on, and it, it, it dude, it's amazing. That's what I want from these shows. Like you know, I want to be a like get in touch with the past like the old episodes get in touch with the source material the comics and then bring in new shit that i'm act, like absolutely hooked to like they this the disney peak is going on right now with x-men 97 i think like they've been struggling on other shows which i still enjoy i still watch like the star wars shows mm-hmm. they, they have things that are questionable i i got you but you know this x-men 97 is just they need more bring on spider-man 98 do it like, yeah <laughs> really I, I want that next same animators and everything yeah real shit Let's have like happen. yeah the voice guy said he's down he's alive and kicking greg brady's still out there he wants to come back he said would you would you be down for like an avengers cartoon with like robert downey jr and like chris evans and like all the cast like kind of like what if but like like stuff that the avengers might have been doing like in between the major movies or something like kind of like no i think no. that storyline is perfect the way it is yeah so i don't want them to bring robert downey jr back like in those, any capacity uh, yeah yeah the infinity saga i like i i want looking for it i can't find it i just want the infinity saga box set like everything after i think the spider-mans are good but yeah, you can just buy those solo. You just buy those solo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I mean, real is... shit, I I haven't bought I haven't bought any of like the new phase movies. I just yeah, I just watched them on Disney Plus watching, once. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I refuse to buy, buy Thor: Love and Thunder because that movie is fucking insulting. I like Ragnarok. I'll, I'll give him. Ragnarok. I love Ragnarok. That was a I good like, movie. A lot of people are like, oh, that's not Thor. He he's too goofy. I'm like, it works in that movie though no it he's does funny it he's does. funny but he's oh that's the thing is like he's funny but he's also a badass like yeah. it's like it's like that balance that they had in infinity war with him where like he's making jokes but then like he has one of the most epic moments like bring me thanos i remember the theater just erupted when that happened it was so awesome yeah i've I seen that movie well, multiple times in theaters actually and every time it got to that point the theater would lose their shit so even with different audiences you know what i mean different people in the crowd it still would elicit the same response so the thor the whole reason that he went with thor ragnarok i think i mentioned this before going back to kevin smith he listened to kevin smith's modcast and he chris hemsworth went back to tiki what td or whatever his name is and said like listen and i was listening to thor so thor realized that it's- <laughs> anthony hopkins was great they, they 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 used him a little bit but like just the amounts that he's in he because that guy gives it his all and everything even terrible stuff yeah. like rebel moon and terrible transformers i mean he's in like commercials right now and he's giving it his all like i thought it was like a uh, like a trailer for a movie and it's some like stupid like app i was like wow good for him like still like getting he's, some money he's a true him. actor like you were saying she's an actress he's a true actor to the point where anything he takes He's gonna give it a hundred percent, regardless of how silly it might be. He, he 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 doesn't just show up to do a paycheck. He actually wants to like show his talent, like yeah. Jeremy, like Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Irons in fucking that Dungeons and Dragons movie. Not a great movie, not a great script, but by golly, he's gonna show up every day and give it yep. his darndest. Let the blood rain from the sky. <laughs> I'm gonna insert the clip right there. <laughs> 32 i'm writing it down right now <laughs> let yeah the blood rain <laughs> let the blood rain from the sky when yeah, i've been favorite. writing down different things but um but yeah dude i mean ragnarok i think that that was i might buy that one but i i mean i got disney plus i don't need to buy it but but because after after no way home there's nothing right I mean, we Guardi- got uh, Guardians Volume Three was like the only other decent one. But I see all Guardians movies to me are isolated. I feel like they play no part. Like I know they, they have the Power Stone in the first one, but I feel like that was just kind of thrown in there. You take away the Power Stone, it could be some other kind of relic that he survives from the Celestials. Like you know, 
that could because the whole key of that like him holding but, that power stone was to kind of say that he was a celestial himself but gamora was the catalyst for the soul stone also yeah but she, in the guardians movie the, the, yeah like, but i'm she, just saying it it's not sure that you get to know her when she's in infinity war so we do have like a more of a backstory about her yeah but then in the next movie you got some other gamora and it's just like and like, and an infinity war thing, it... and an infinity war like that the relationship between her and peter quill you understand it more because of those movies but i get what you're saying they they don't connect as much but i feel like they connect to infinity war not to the whole overarching story how about that like just infinity war they're they're pretty important well, okay, yeah. So to Infinity War, it's important. Guardians of the Galaxy is important. The overarching Infinity story, War, like the first Infinity Avengers War, and stuff. Yeah, no. Nah. But Infinity War is not important for the Guardian story because, like I said, you you take you separate those two movies. You watch the Guardians, you just feel like they broke up, like in between two and three, and like she's just pissed off. And you, I guess you can't. You would get thrown off if it was like, why doesn't she remember him and all that shit? Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I guess you still need that. So yeah, the, the yeah, one movie. I, but I get what you're saying. Like the overarching, the entire story, like from like the Peter's first story. Avengers and everything. Yeah. yeah, that they don't matter yet. Yeah, there's Infinity Stones, but they don't truly matter just yet. Yeah, the whole point of it is Peter finding family outside of his own family because he's an orphan and was kidnapped and had what is it Stockholm syndrome? He felt like he got connected yeah. with his kidnapper. <laughs> We're Ravengers. I I do like that ending. I I with the grandpa them just eating cereal and shit. And mm -hmm. It's like it's a thirty year old man, a forty year old man owning his yard. He's like, I know. <laughs> it's just bullshitting with each other. <laughs> but so, yeah, I, like I, I Marvel's speak. really been downhill. Like w w Wakanda Forever. I'm never buying that movie. That movie. Yeah. Well, okay. Shit. Before we go, before we go on, have you seen the? I wish I could find it. So. There is a thing online that follows like actresses that played like Peter's mom. And then so the woman, so you know how in um She-Hulk we uh he told her that Captain America lost his virginity at uh when he was on a USO USO tour. Uh-huh. So they show that girl in um on the USO uso tour and um that the woman who plays that chick who they hinted around was it is actually the same actress who plays peter quill's mom oh wow so what they're saying is that peter quill's mom is the um the granddaughter or the no the daughter of uh like Peter Quill's mom is the daughter of Cap and the um, the USO girl that he lost his virginity, got her pregnant, had that kid, and then that kid met in the seventies, around her thirties, met uh, Ego, had Peter in the eighty or in the seventies, and that Peter is actually the great grandson of Captain America, and that is so also why they're related. Interesting. Yeah, so that's also why he was like kind of chosen too, because he. I mean, Captain America powers. Mm hmm. It might have his, like, you know, the serum or in it. I don't know. But yeah, there's a whole thing, like, the, like, I found a couple of them on YouTube shorts where they show that. His that Metachlorian count was higher because than what, what, human. Yeah, because, because what they were saying was that, um, the principal in Spider Man is the grandson of the um captain america's yeah because he's got the howling uh, commandos picture in his office yeah, yeah I totally, and, and I totally yeah and he, it's the same actor but it's his grandfather so they connect it and someone else too plays like a grandson or granddaughter of the same person so they're saying like it makes sense that that could be true so i was like oh that's awesome that it's captain america's like bastard grandson <laughs> that is pretty cool captain america and, and star lord never talk no, I don't think they talked never. at all in the Avengers. No, they never interacted <laughs> because they were on like two different battle, like war, of, like fronts. Yeah, was kind of fighting on Titan while Cap was on Earth, and then even in Endgame, they never really interact. 
I don't think they ever have a single line of dialogue together, actually. No, they don't. Hold on. The doggos. Shut the fuck up. All right. 38. Cut out. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Leave in. 38. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> Do nothing but yeah it. so but yeah the only guardians he talks to is Groot and rocket because rocket's left behind well and then nebula oh yeah yeah and then he meet- like, i am Groot. i am steve rogers yeah yes he meet- yeah when he meets when uh thor comes back down i, I see you copied my beard <laughs> yeah yeah marvel but as you were saying marvel has gone downhill we're kind of forever uh, Mrs. The Brave just watched it on the flight and she said it was sad in the beginning, but she said it was pointless to be a Marvel movie. Like, why would you want to make that sad and depressing? Like, why wouldn't they just replace him? Like, you know, like, just like replace the actor and keep Black Panther going. Like, keep because he made such a good Black Panther, it was such a good movie. Keep that story going by replacing the actor. Instead, they, they made a sad and depressing funeral movie with a villain that didn't make sense. Like, I know it's a villain in the comics Namor. that he fights. Yeah, but it's like, why... They try to make sense of the technology, but in the comics, he's an ancient Greek that had the power of Atlantis and stuff like that. It makes sense, because Greece is connected with Atlantis. How is this technology connected to ancient Mayans? It just doesn't, like, you know, it doesn't fit. Like, yep. I, I like how what they did with that. They tried to bring in that, that ancient history in, but it's not connected to the comics at all, like... Mm-hmm. It made like I don't know. It's just it wasn't. I didn't like that part. Like, do another like Mexican American superhero. Don't don't make name more. And the way they had to defeat him, <laughs> the most it, racist shit ever. I remember a guy doing a rant about it because it was like the most racist way to defeat a villain ever. His what back, was was, his back was too wet, so they needed to use a dryer on his back. <laughs> Oh my god, that oh you don't remember it? <laughs> why didn't I think of that? Yeah, oh my they god. literally it's they literally right. defeat Namor with a dryer because his power all comes from his his I don't even want to say it because it's racist. Wet his wet back. <laughs> I could say it, I'm Hispanic. Yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> they went there, man. That's funny. Wow. He was defeated by a dryer. Yeah. Suri, like I like that actress in the other movies but yeah she just you can't headline a film and be a star and she was only the black panther for like 10 minutes in the in the black panther movie what the fuck yeah but we've talked about we've done reviews on black panther before so check those out on the page from a, a long yeah. time ago yeah. pop those links after seeing that trailer what are your hopes and views on that i mean there was a lot of stuff we did see in the other trailer but I mean, it looks it looks promising. Like, I mean, it doesn't look terrible, like god awful, like some people make it seem. Because apparently, women are bad. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's what I don't get. It's all like, where are all the white people? Where where are all the men? It's like there's plenty of men in there. It's space with alien. So why not create more space alien it's funny, creatures? It's funny people complain about checking boxes when isn't that what you're doing? Because have wanting a white man is a is technically yeah. a, a box check and if you don't see that it, it makes you mad so they're just checking the boxes that you don't like so it makes you mad nah, it's, it's ridiculous um but i i like carrie ann moss i i want to see her in star wars it'll be interesting um i think yoda needs to be there if they're really gonna have it be a hundred years why the fuck would he not be around and the fact that he's not in the trailers is kind of worrisome. That's the only thing that kind of bothers me is like, where's Yoda? You know, he's gonna pop up. Well, dude, he's a he's a Jedi Master, and my thing is, he also believes that the Sith haven't been around for millennia. So I think that these uh, this group of Jedi that we're seeing is gonna not tell the Council that it's running into the Sith or uh, or the Council. Is going to tell them, don't tell anyone about this. We can't let it spread out that the Sith are coming back. Like, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be some kind of, like, secret mission or secret, like... Yeah, because they, they sit straight up in the Phantom Menace. Like, oh, we haven't heard from them in a millennia. Mm-hmm. And that's a thousand years, and this is, like, a hundred and something years before Phantom Menace. So 
I think I'm. That's either uh, Plagueis's <laughs> old old apprentice, or it's fucking Shmi. You, you know how you know how I want the show to end is oh. I want all the people that know about the Sith to get killed, and then like yes. they're able to cover yes. it up. That's what I want. Yes. Like yes. I'm not saying I, I, all the good guys need to die, but the ones that know the truth kind of need to yeah. die to protect continuity. Yes. Yes, I like that a lot. That's why Yoda's not in it. Like have him like walk by, like like Master Yoda pops up and's like, "What? What are you? What are you guys doing?" Hmm? Yeah, like I, yeah, I like, definitely think he should be in a scene, or Yoda goes off on like his own mission that takes him like away, and then he's kind of like yeah. preoccupied during all these events. Yeah, like he doesn't learn the main mission, but he like he they need something from him, so he goes on his own mission. We kind of get an episode of that, and then maybe even like, no, Dooku was too young. No, yeah, never mind. But there could be other. I was gonna say find a from, child Dooku, like, but wouldn't Kai Mundi and like Plo Koon? Yes, Plo Koon. aliens they could live longer than yeah human human lifespans. Oh, dude, have him find a a or Plo Koon's his uh, apprentice, like a, a kid Plo Koon. He's training, like you know, and they're like I have to show that because Plo yeah, because, Koon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Y- Yoda, Yoda's. We I think we talked about this before. Where Yoda's so old. He would have the, probably the most Padawans out of anyone because yes. his lifespan is going to outlive all, most of his Padawans anyways. Yeah, because, I mean, that's so sad. Can you imagine? He's all like, it, it's like he treats us like dogs. <laughs> like, you know? Oh, like, uh, yeah. Like, I'll, I'll have another I'll one have in show short. Years. Yeah. yeah. Like, Hmm. Put one. Put this one to sleep. I must. Hmm. But Next Yoda's one, the one that said attachment. Um, yeah. You know, all those things lead to the dark side. So he himself just doesn't get attached. And that would be an interesting thing to see from Yoda. Is like you said, kind of treating the Padawans kind of like shit. Kind of showing further that the Jedi's are flawed and broken, and their 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 system doesn't work. I want Yoda kind of realizing that. But then at, towards the end of the episode, like, he realizes, like, no, we must follow. Like, he has a kind of, like, maybe we should treat them. Or or he's so attached to Plo Kloon, he kind of gets angry, kind of, like, starts going to the dark side. And that's where he learns, like, I can't do this. Like, like you know, Ooh. like, I have to oh. separate myself from that. Like, you oh, know? If, yeah. And, like, what if Yoda's like, side mission? Lesson. Yeah. What if Yoda's side mission, too, is, like, he goes to, like, an old Jedi temple has like his own little adventure and then he discovers the prophecy of anakin like the and that's how the, the council knows about the prophecy when mace windu is like the the prophecy says you know and all they talk about the prophecy in phantom menace so yeah phantom menace. so wouldn't it be cool to see like yoda find it or something or it was like it was like placed there by sidious so it's like he wanted the jedi to find this the uh this prophecy that maybe was written by a sith to trick the Jedi, that would kind of change hate- all of Star Wars, though. That might be a little too much. No, I hate to tell you this, but the prophecies are actually um, in a stone building on a temple, one of the older temples on a planet that uh, Count Dooku was studying for a long time. So Count Dooku was the one who found the prophecies, and that's well, why maybe he we could like have Yoda like find it and then not tell anybody. <laughs> true that. True that. Yeah, because they they kind of always been around, I guess. Like they, they studied them and stuff, but they decided that the prophecies weren't actually true. And they kind of, it's weird because it sounds like they separated themselves from the force and they became like the more of the knights. And if for like millennia, they were just like space cops. Mm-hmm. And then it was um, Count Dooku who's kind of connected more to like him and Yoda disagreed. Like when he was training Yoda, Count Dooku wanted to study the force more when Yoda said, you got to have balance. And Count Dooku's like, but if I have the force, I'll be the strongest like person. Like, why would do I need to use my lightsaber? Mm-hmm. So Yoda kind of pushed Dooku to be a duelist. So he made that fucking monster. Yeah. Like Dooku was already, but Dooku as he was training um, Qui Gon, that's why Qui Gon got into the prophecies and stuff. Because mm-hmm. Dooku, um, so that's why he like meditated and stuff. So Dooku also created that monster that Sidious was so afraid of. So it's this awesome like fucking lineage. Like, no wonder Anakin was so strong and shit. Like, he had fucking... 
like the best teachers and grandfathers, I guess, and shit. Like, I just, I, I want to see, you know, fuck it. I want Yoda's story. I want him training Dooku. I want to see that, like young Dooku and shit. And that's why I don't understand. Like, Disney's not doing like a Yoda focused story. Like, yeah, they did baby yeah. y- Grogu and all that. It's a, it's it's cute and everything. But what about Yoda? Like, you know, in his prime. Or just taught you know teaching dooku though that time period that there's yeah. got to be some conflict or something that could make it you know exciting enough or action-packed enough even if or, it doesn't have a lot of fighting i think it'd still be kind of interesting like or like fucking like you know how uh anakin told ahsoka it's like that's your uh your lineage i it's what my master taught me and it's what i taught you and so mm-hmm. like I like maybe have like in Ahsoka season two, if there is one, have her meditating on that planet with the force ghost and all that stuff. And maybe she like Anakin's like kind of telling her like different like teachings and stuff, but then mm-hmm. go back to the source of that teaching, like Yoda telling Dooku that. Cause then Dooku tells Qui Gon that, then Qui Gon's like, you know, like have the different like storylines of like how, how all these different teachings came up and like have different plot points like maybe yoda teaching dooku this plot point and then have qui-gon teaching a young obi-wan that plot point and then obi-wan with a young anakin who looks like a cross between like uh jake lloyd and then the hayden christensen like you know like a pre-teen one and have mm-hmm. like you and mcgregor come back and tell this teenage anakin like oh no well we could see the like, no. the nest the nest of gundarks that that story from attack yes, of the yes! That, i love that yes do that no no that would we'll never speak of that again or he says something like that. that nest of gun docks my friend. that that does not count <laughs> but yeah it's just i want more star wars i'm not gonna fucking sit here and say i'm I, just because i've been disappointed with a few things that they released i'm not gonna watch it because i am because yep. i, I want to see all those like you know i mean it's something we both grew up with we're gonna watch think, it till we die i think we should uh, yeah oh yeah i think we should definitely do a review show like we did with ahsoka for yeah. that watch a couple maybe record that too yeah <laughs> yeah no yeah yeah for sure and then we'll just well, well, the I, best premieres like this you know that way i can well, put it, i can then, slice in clips for the episodes too while we're talking yeah, about well it. that's what i was thinking because i'm wondering if we should watch it like record us watching it and our like uh like our reactions and then after have like a us just talking about it and stuff like going to yeah, and I, I could combine it yeah yeah I'll do that i'll do that i think we're upgrading we're trying new things here on the channel yeah in fact, the life yeah the, life the live and comments too. and i don't like it kind of breaks the flow or i'm when i'm just kind of becoming like a questionnaire or something just ask answering questions and Q and A's are fun yeah. and everything for certain situations, but for shows like this, it's like we're just talking about a topic and stuff. You want to listen? Yeah. Feel free. Yeah, if you don't, you can go. If not, yeah. Like and subscribe, of course, still. But yeah. but before we had a like, we'll we'll make it an hour then. Before we go out on the acolyte, then, um, so because it's Star Wars month and it's May and all that. You watch, you watch The Phantom Menace, right, with Padawanabe? Yeah. How much different is it after Tales of the Jedi to watch that and kind of see different plot lines, storylines? I like oh, to know that. Great. Like, isn't it isn't it so much better? Because I watched it yeah. the other day because Mrs. The Brave said, oh, that's the worst one. I was like, no, it's not. So I sat there and tried to explain to her, like, okay, well, right here, this is where he goes back to the planet. After this meeting with Anakin, uh, Count Dooku pops up and with Yaddle and all this stuff. And I'm like... It, it it just makes it so much better that there's more stuff going on in the background. Like, it it makes it attaches us more to it. Like, you know, because yeah. you're introducing this weird, weird, long haired Jesus looking Jedi, and you don't know who he is. But <laughs> like, like you know, like 30 years later, it's like, no, that's Qui Gon. I mean, he was a kid too once. He had this father figure who loved him, and now in Episode Two, when he's all like, I miss him very much. You know that he does because he cared for that kid. He cared for his Padawan. He was attached to it. And it was so much easier to go to the dark side because he actually loved that kid as his own, like you know. So it, oh yeah, it makes it this like. And he had so attachment. He had attachment for Obi Wan too. Like, like I, I rewatching it again. Like I was really noticing how how much like of a rebel, like a ro- like just a straight up rogue um, Qui Gon was. Like 
every turn he, he just did whatever he felt like he needed to do regardless of what the council was saying yeah he wasn't supposed to go to naboo he wasn't supposed to fight that fight that battle for him but he saw people in need and he went and because obi-wan says the council's not gonna like that well what the council doesn't know won't hurt them yeah and that's that's one thing that i liked about it too is palpatine didn't you know account for that because he knows how the jedis operate and he's like they're not gonna just go to war yes, they're not exactly. wo- they're not war minded they're literally like you said they're just space cops and they're out of their jurisdiction you know type of thing and yeah yeah i think that's after episode one i think that's that's i think that he kind of sensed qui-gon after qui-gon helped with naboo and stuff that's why he sent darth maul down there to take care of him because he knew that something my thing is how do you know that the jedi went Mm-hmm. I, like you know like i i know they have like a third eye sometimes and all that but it's just that was like to send maul down there but he knew he had to eliminate those two jedi like both obi-wan and qui-gon well at least qui-gon the most because i mean he saw it well yeah that's right he he knew that the sith were seen and stuff so he wanted the qui-gon to be ended yeah and he was already like Dude, that- putting his claws into dooku by that point i'm sure yeah no 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 the Remember that scene is when he kills Yaddle when they go back to Naboo. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, he kills Yaddle after the funeral of Qui Gon, right? Because yeah, there's the whole. Yeah. Which that's a great scene in Tales of the Jedi. Okay, but before we go, can I get a quick rant from you about Tales of the Empire? <laughs> Fuck that show! My quick God, rant. like I was so excited to uh, to see Tales of the Empire. Like to yep, see like, like, like Darth Vader and fucking General Grievous in it, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, Vader didn't even talk. He took three breaths, and they bowed to it, and then she put on her helmet. Um. And then it's like, I, I didn't want to see that. Like Barris storyline, I did not want to see. Like she is a war criminal. Anakin hated her. For, for framing his little sister like that's what i that this the scene with him fighting barris when she framed ahsoka is amazing because you see those he's holding back his dark side he was about to choke her like mm-hmm. when he was fighting her so that that's an amazing scene and then she was pretty much put in as a prisoner of war like she did a war crime and and tried to blame it on it and it showed ahsoka and both anakin that the jedi council probably isn't the right like right choice for jedi right now on the light side at least and so that's where it ended i just assumed that she that maybe anakin and what uh, during the battle of coruscant he invaded and eliminated her like he wanted to because mm-hmm. he had an attachment to ahsoka so he wanted to seek revenge it was revenge of the sith like you know like yeah but no to have bring her back and have him train her as an inquisitor just makes that storyline pointless i did not like that i yeah I, and who cares about her he walks in fully as darth vader sits there caesar and says go do my bidding no nah, i would have stabbed her in the chest i know right. she would have lived but like you know <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me to use that character as they did like and then for her just to show her to die in the first place what was the point of that storyline it didn't add or take away from anything in any of the skywalker anthology yeah and then to have elsbeth the battle on dathomir was cool with grievous mm-hmm. but and he's just laughing maniacally into in the yes the distance and the just yeah i, I, I like that first <laughs> episode that was like the high yeah. point for me but and then it went down again we know how that story ends and it did not add or take away i think you said it best when it should have been titled the acquaintances of the empire because neither one turned out to be part of the fucking empire barris she was more jedi than anything that's what i also did why would a character like that who's going to the dark side and betrayed someone like that become a jedi again I, i don't want her redeemed i want a fucking villain like it's that's not a tales of the empire it was tales of people almost joining the empire like it was ridiculous because even elsbeth doesn't even like like she makes a couple tied defenders but that gets destroyed by the rebels so she didn't even like get her money for that 
And they didn't even show how she got the Beskar spear. That was the one thing I thought they were going to cover. Yes. Yes. She just shows up fighting with it again. Yeah, they just wanted like, to show, oh. like, why does Thrawn like her? Oh, it's because she what, had the designs for the Tide Defender that they built on Lethal. So that connects to Rebels, but it's like, how does this help us? I don't care. I didn't care when they were building them on Rebels. Like, it, it just, it was a zero out of 10 to me. I didn't need to watch it. I wasted an hour and a half of my life watching yeah. two characters I didn't care about. And you love Star Wars, and I love Star Wars. I love yeah. Star Wars, and like Ahsoka, I, and then like I defended Sabine when I try. I tried to. I know it was horrible. I tried to defend her getting stabbed in the ovary, saying like, "Oh, I guess it wouldn't kill her." But yeah, this was just pointless. Like, I, poor, poor Qui Gon, the only guy to really die from a lightsaber. <laughs> he got he got stabbed in the lung. Well. Technically, I, Count, I think Count was, Dooku got his head chopped off by two, so he he didn't live through that. But yeah, <laughs> you have to you have to get decapitated by two lightsabers to truly be dead, uh, or be Qui Gon yeah. and just die. And but yeah, yeah, like Darth Maul didn't even stab him in the heart because he still had time to like talk. And this was after Obi Wan and Darth Maul fought for like five minutes too. Yeah, but, yeah. Well, then uh, someone did make a good point i don't know where i heard it but it's like he was holding on to the using the force to hold on to talk to obi-wan because yeah. he needed to tell him train the boy mm-hmm. and i love the explanation of duel of the fates even hayden christensen explains it best when it's like it was the fate of anakin like yep. whoever lives is who's gonna train him so qui-gon lives the prophecies fulfilled with the light side of the force yeah. like qui-gon goes off to raise him and then obi-wan it's down this path that leads to what we have now so yep the perfect way to put it yeah so i think that'll do it for now two guys talking weekend update number one yes new new show title but still like two and guys subscribe talking. like and subscribe and if you're friends of the show who's been watching us go ahead leave a comment and share and thanks for watching to the end guys yep Bye for now.